Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Rotowire Fantasy Soccer Podcast. My name is Andrew Laird, Senior Soccer Editor of Rotowire. Joined on this Monday, November 23rd by Luis Pacheco to talk about Tuesday's Champions League slate. Luis, we were just talking about this slate and I was like, no, 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 hold on. Well, let's wait because I might as well start yeah. recording now. Um, there are a lot of expensive players on this slate. Um, yep. And I think you could make 100 million lineups if you wanted to. Yep. And um, that includes uh, no Lionel Messi, who's the most expensive player on the slate. But even without yeah, him, break there. Yeah. yeah, even without him, we have five players with five-digit salaries. Um, yep, it's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah, and it's uh, you know it does slates when the you know the the big favorite of the group to win the group plays the the Cinderella. So, you know, you know, you're going to need goals, but I don't know. You don't know where they're coming from, but also, you know, you have a, you know, a couple of decent uh, defenders in good spots and taking sets. So, you know, and they are, you know, they're pricing. I mean, they're pricing, I guess, optimally. I mean, I feel Quadrado is a little bit lower than, than he should be. Uh, considering that he's taking set pieces, well, I don't know if with Dybala playing, he might take not that many set pieces. But anyhow, but uh, but it feels that Telles and Cuadrado can, you know, should make your way to your lineups. But then you have to sacrifice some pieces elsewhere, right? So yeah, I was. Um, we were talking about doing this podcast yesterday because they actually came out with prices fairly early. I didn't even believe you when you told me they were out because I think yeah. it was possibly even Saturday. Yeah, um, I think so. So. Uh, we ended up waiting, and I had written some of my article yesterday as well. Basically, I wrote not too much, thankfully, but I wrote a little bit about why you don't play Messi on this slate. And then it turns out he's not even going to be on the slate because they're going to keep him in, in Spain. Um, but it didn't really make that much of a difference. Um, yeah. Just in terms of, like... This is a repeat of the matches that they had just before the international break. It's just the reverse fixture. So, yeah. um, but like you said, it's like the powerhouse teams against the Cinderellas. So, like we have uh, Juventus against uh, Ferran Svaros, uh, Man United against uh, Istanbul, uh, Dortmund against Bruges, and then we at least have somewhat closer ones: uh, PSG. Uh, against Leipzig and then Lazio against Zenit. And then there's the Barcelona uh, Dynamo Kiev match. Obviously, Barcelona were much bigger favorites before the Messi news, even though they've been kind of hot garbage this season, particularly yeah. Messi. Um, yeah. But like when I went, so I started writing my article. Now, so yeah. yeah. I started writing my article, and it's like, all right, I always start the same. Like I look for the who's taking set pieces, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, if you're focusing on set pieces, on this slate, I think you're going to get absolutely murdered. Um, they're just like yeah. way too many goals that are expected to come that taking guys with goal upside uh, just seems like such... And that, that doesn't mean for every slot that you have to just go goal hunting. But if you yeah. like build a cash lineup and you're like, I've got set piece takers in every spot, um, I think you're going to get killed in cash games. Absolutely, yeah. That's that's the you know the nature of the of the sleigh, right? And when we were saying before, like the top of the of the group plays the Cinderella of the group. So you know Juventus again for Paris or you know Haaland scored two goals, right, in Bruges. So mm -hmm. now they're gonna play back at their house. Um, um, so you know, and all those guys are ten tops, and then you have you know even the guys that are in the kind of like even matchups like. PSG, you know, Neymar always produces and they are in a very tough pot because they need to win. But, you know, that's uh, does that mean that, I mean, Neymar can compensate for for the goals that maybe Morata scores or I don't know. And also the other thing is like, you know, I mean, if you want, I mean, there is an avenue to get like two high price guys, maybe two, def two high price defenders. And then, you know, get some cheap guys, but maybe you're going to have to get uh, center backs and, on defense and, and just pray for goals. But, uh, you know, as we were saying before, like, Telles is a guy that if he plays, we should play, should have double digits. Like, I mean, we should expect something similar to West Brom match. So, sure. you know, and then it's Bruno at 10,000. So Bruno is a great play. But, you know, considering everybody else is like, what do you do? So, so I think I, I'm 
praying for Bernardeschi to start uh, because that kind of like helps to yeah. have a lineup with uh, Teles and Cuadrado. And if Dybala doesn't play, I, mean, I would feel much better about Cuadrado um, since being, he's been taking corners and he's a defender. But, you know, anyhow, we can, I mean, as I say, you know, you can get punch anyway. So you just hoping that you guys punch higher than the other guys. So, That's right. Yeah. You know. um, it was weird because... Uh... So if we take Messi off the slate, Ronaldo is the most expensive at 11-4. Uh, yeah. Haaland is at 11-1. Neymar, 10-7. Uh, Mbappe, 10,000 even. And then Bruno, who's just midfield eligible, is 10-3. So um, there really was no hesitation for me to like plug Ronaldo right in. Um, yeah. It seems like this is the perfect situation for him to stat pad and get his... Uh, champions league goal record extended as much as he can um yeah. just killing teams that are w- way overmatched um but the further you, go, you went down like obviously the like the juventus lineup could be a number of different ways like they yeah they have plenty of guys that we can play you mentioned bernardeski like Murata, dibala like i doubt they all start but like i guess if they yeah. move bernardeski back they could yeah. um but like you said um a few minutes, like a minute ago, that the pricing feels efficient, um, yeah. except for Bernardeschi. He's the yeah. only one. So I feel like if he starts, he's just going to be so popular because, um, like, Juventus should absolutely roll. And yeah. it's perfectly fine playing him with Ronaldo. So it's not like you, and, and I don't think anybody's playing Bernardeschi instead of Ronaldo. Like, I think yeah. that's the mistake that some people go down at least on Champions League slates, of like the, well, there's the goal-dependent guy, uh, and I'll just take the guy who plays the same position because he may take two or three corners. But like <laughs> Ronaldo's minus 385 to score. Um, so, like, I just, I don't know how, I think the only reason you fade him is in tournaments because everybody else is going to have Ronaldo. Yeah, man. And even though, you know, I agree with you. I mean, I think like Ronaldo is like the first guy in the lineup, and then you... You wait for the Juventus lineup to see how it shows up. So, you know, I mean, worst case scenario is things what um, Dybala and Kulusevsky and no, um, no Bernardeski. So that's that's probably the worst case scenario. Best case scenario is no Dybala and, uh, and Quadrado and something similar to what we've seen on the on the last match on the on the on the the culture on Serie A mm-hmm. but uh but you know like that's probably the the first one because if you if you see Morata at 9,000 he's expensive but he comes for scoring goals so you know what you do I mean I think if I don't see Morata or Dybala it will be great I think we're going to be we're going to see one or the other um Dybala implications for me is like I'm not sure if Quadrado is going to keep his set pieces with uh with Dybala in there Dybala is a is a left-footed player though and uh uh, Quadrado takes the corner for the right side, mm-hmm. so maybe Bernardeschi is the one that loses his corner. So you know, I I don't know. Like I mean, it will be you know, you guys are listening to the pod or watching on YouTube, you do you, your research and you 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 play accordingly, right? And um, saying that, and then you have, as you mentioned, you know, like I mean, the I'm not interested in the Manchester United guys. I mean, I, I think Manchester is better than Istanbul by Saxon's year, but they are not scoring as many goals, and with Bruno taking the penalty kits most of the time, I mean, I know Rashford has some, but, you know, I think those guys, to play Rashford or... I mean, I'd rather go to, to Neymar or I'd even go down to Di Maria, right? I think that also, obviously, playing Dybala over Rashford is his stars. Um, then, then we have the Lazio guys... I just Lazio. It seems like a low floor, low ceiling team, and those prices. I mean, I can play uh, Luis Alberto at six thousand. Like Correa was last time at six five hundred, but but at eight eight nine thousand, like Immobile, it's just I'd rather pass. I mean, Senate is still a, a decent team, and and you know, San Petersburg is not that far from Europe as you you, you will think. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so anyhow, so those guys. So then uh, we have. Uh, I mean, the next ones are, I mean, we see like Osmani Dembele, which I'm not sure is going to start. He might, like Barcelona is going to, I mean, we were talking about Messi. Messi is not in the in the, in the the squad. He's just being rested, same with Frankie De Jong. So we're going to see an alternative line on for Barcelona. I mean, one without Messi, right? But 
you know, I, I believe Coutinho is going to start. He takes some set pieces. I think he's not forward here because, you know, like you never know what designations anyone's going right. to get. So, um, uh, but, you know, you have a mix of Griezmann, um, Coutinho, Pedri, Dembele, and, and Trincao, actually. Trincao, yeah. So any of those guys, you know, Dembele is the most expensive. The other guys are reasonably priced. I mean, I still won't trust Griezmann, even without Messi. Uh, because he doesn't have the set pieces. He's, he's either Pedri seems to be the guy, or Coutinho, or, you know, Trincao is his starter, or Pedri might take some. Um, you know, those guys at 6,000 might be affordable. I mean, especially the forwards, like like Pedri at 5,800 might be a, a decent play if you don't get Pernardeski, or even if you need to fill a, a, a cheap the utility, right, or midfielder yeah. spot. Yeah. Um, Besides that, I don't know. Like, do you like Nkunku? Uh, Nkunku is one of the ones that, like... So I feel like he's always underpriced. Um, yes. But, like, he's underpriced for his floor. But the last... Was it the last slate that he scored? Uh, did he score against PSG? Yes, he did. He did. So in that... Um, on that slate, I'm trying to think of who I played instead of Nkunku. But I played somebody because um, I was like, this is Champions League, so I need goals. Yeah, and then Nkunku scored, and the guy I went with didn't. Um, uh, we we play Ocampos, right? No, Ocampos is the. That's exactly player. who it was. Ocampos was definitely because he's he's What's on the early Camp- game. Oh, uh, it's earlier again, right? Yeah, yeah. so that's it exactly was what it was. We went to Sevilla, thinking that Sevilla yeah, might. They should crush, and yeah, and of course he scores at home against PSG. Yeah. Um, I have no interest in in Kunku, uh, particularly at that price. Um, yeah, one of the guys we you skipped over that I think is somewhat interesting. I. I probably wouldn't play him in cash given the price but like you were saying how like if you if you're looking at 9600 for Rashford then you may as well just go up to Mbappe or Neymar yeah. who are not that or Di Maria who's actually cheaper but Martial at 8400 isn't bad like leading the line for United yeah. against in that match like I just don't think like that's the price yeah. point that I'd be willing to consider Rashford um yeah I think it's I fine like I I don't think I go there um yeah but I might play Martial over like Dembele if I had to. I just don't think I have to in this range. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I, for me, this range kind of dead. I mean, I, I'll, I would like to play Sancho as well, but you know, it's like a Borussia Dortmund. He feels that he's either Haaland or no goals. Yeah. Um, and they haven't been as good. I mean, until the last Champions League match, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, this range feels that a little bit dead, especially, you know, if I if you want to play, you know, two high price guys, probably this range is going to be complicated, uh, you know, over six or five hundred. I mean, I don't mind any of that. Like, you know, like um, probably Martial over Correa, even over Luis Alberto, even though Luis Alberto has a, a decent floor, but, you know, the, the goals are not there. Yeah. And, um, and Manchester needs to win, so I mean, so they keep it, you know, that group ahead. Um, yeah, they lost the reverse. Should, yeah, and then you know we go down. You know, we talk about Griezmann and Pedri. I will play Pedri over Griezmann. Griezmann might be better. No. Uh, without Messi, but you <laughs> oh. know, like I, I mean, I, I saw he almost scored, uh, but he's not. I mean, he's not the France guy. So you know, there's a lot of different people here. You know, never knows, but uh, but I, I would rather play Pedri over Griezmann if he's a star. It's not, you know, it's a. Uh, I mean, I don't know anything at the bottom here. Is like rather not play any of them, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't know anyone at the bottom here. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Mirtu Zuni, but you know, for four thousand against Juventus, right. it just <clears throat> doesn't feel like I have to, you know. If you have one of those five dollars GPP that are non-existent anymore, maybe I can throw <laughs> one or a three-dollar striker like doesn't have that used to have fifteen thousand entries, but now they don't. So, you know, like I mean, supposedly I guess uh, just rich people play uh, DFS soccer. That's right. Guess, uh, that's right. Or high gamblers. I don't know how the right terminology is. Um, that's probably the correct uh, the correct one. Would you play uh, Brathwaite if he started forty-nine hundred? I doubt he does, but. Barcelona. No, they, they qualify I, for the try. next round with a win. Yeah, Barcelona should be fine, and and I still Dinamo Kiev has the same uh, COVID nineteen stuff, right? They have a lot of yeah. Uh, you know, I I, I wouldn't mind Braithwaite, but I feel that 
God, I, I just he feels that uh, he's he plays he's gonna be 45 minutes so that's fair so, you know I'm not sure um I mean I'd rather not but he's uh, I mean if like if you need to feel as you know second four or he's kind of tough and you spend your money on midfielders and defenders you know go with it I mean uh, um yeah I have no opinion there I mean Barcelona seems like a, an enigma wrap in a conundrum so yeah um Speaking of the midfielders, I was going through, and you mentioned Alex Tellis before. Uh, Tellis is, I think, a reason that you can fade Bruno. Um, yeah, it just seems at ten three, like you should use that money at a in a forward spot. It's, it's actually weird. That, so the forward spot, like the second one, uh, if if we don't get Bernardeschi, and you don't want Barcelona. For some reason, like if you so basically, if you're trying to say I'm going to take Ronaldo, and if I can't play Bernardeschi and Pedri's not an option, uh, I think like you're really handicapped at that point in terms of salary, where you almost now you're. I think a lot of people are like, all right, how do I afford Ronaldo and Di Maria or Mbappe or name? Like I think you're like really spending up at forward, Um, and the slight benefit that we get in midfield is that the there are only two guys in the top like 15 of midfielders yeah. that are just midfield eligible like you don't really have to fill your midfield spots with expensive guys and so yeah. doing it do paying up at forwards not going to be that difficult because yeah. like if you throw out Bruno at 103 we have Coutinho at 8700 the next highest priced guy is Sarabia who's probably not even going to start at 7400 yeah. um, I think like midfield is where people are going to really save their money. It is possible. I'm, you know, it's just a matter of the story you, you make in your head, right? <laughs> like I'm, I was going to, you know, I was, I was going to play Ronaldo. I'm gonna, I gonna was going to try to feed Messi until, you know, Messi is not here. So it's like, all right, so I want Ronaldo and, and someone else. So, Anyone else that you mentioned, you know, Haaland can score, Neymar have a decent floor, maybe can score a difficult matchup. And I, you know, I know all, all you say about Bruno, but Bruno is the highest scoring guy. I mean, he t- takes penalty kids. He have probably the highest scoring odds to, I mean, he almost have the same scoring odds of Morata or something like that. I mean, it's just high because, you know, he takes penalty kicks. Um, and this is when the story comes in. Like, Manchester United seems to be struggling to score. Struggling. Um, we sit in against uh, West Brom, which is, you know, not the toughest team to score against. Um, and they really have a tr- trouble doing it. So, if if we see a matchup similar, which can play out that way, with, you know, Basak Sergio stays on the counter, have a low block, Similar to the to the reverse match, I mean, they, I don't know if you saw the goal they gave up, but you know, but it's a disaster. Yeah. But I mean, it's a discipline thing. But in that case, you know, I'm expecting like the the, the peripherals to rain. So I like Bruno um, and Telus both, and I I think Bruno. I mean, considering like how undisciplined is the 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 Turkish team, like example, Basaktas is a team that concedes a lot of penalty kids in general and especially against at home i i feel that bruno might be a good a good price obviously you know bruno needs goals but uh, if it, bruno doesn't get goals i feel that you know the the the, the i don't know the flow of the game might help him okay. uh, i don't think manchester united is blowing off this game they need the points after the, what they made in 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 turkey and on their side, like for example, you, you can compare to Haaland. I mean, it's like, if, let's say Dortmund goes uh, ahead two goals to nil early. You know, they might take him out. And I don't know. I, I like Bruno a lot, but I, I come, as we talked before, I mean, it's just tough. Just tough to see, um, you know, it depends what you want to play. If you want to stack Juventus, you could. I, I, I think, you know. Like the second guy after Ronaldo, you pick. I mean, better delivers for you because everything else is going to be the yeah. luck of the of the game. The center back goal here and there, and yeah. you know. Anyhow, I like Bruno, but I understand the the hesitation because there are some cheap midfielders that you can play. 
Um, you know, I, I, you know, you talk about it. I mean, Kulusevsky it doesn't have any more set pieces anymore. So for 7,200, I'd rather go to Gio Reyna in his plays. I mean, not that pretty excited about that range of players. Bormer always over 6,000. I mean, why? We don't know, but his numbers look decent, though. But, yeah, uh, they do. But, um, but you know, for 6,000, I'd rather pass. I like Trincao. He starts at 6,200 away from home. He had a lot to prove. No Messi, so maybe he, they let him play the full match for once. <laughs> uh, and, you know... Um, Oh, Guerrero is not defender. Now he's midfielder. Um, still pretty good, though. Still pretty good. The price is decent. Yeah, it is. You know, he takes a lot of the set pieces. Maybe this game he gets some, some assists, right? Maybe. maybe. <laughs> he had a goal right, last weekend. I'm... Yeah, exactly. Um, I like, uh, I mean, I was thinking, like, you know, one avenue people can go is, like, let's get uh, uh, Ronaldo, get uh, another price guy. I would say Bruno in my head. Then um, stack with Juventus. So stack uh, like the the prices of the mid- Juventus midfielders are cheap. Arthur really scored a goal. Um, uh, Rabiot had like eight nine points on the on the on the previous match. I'm not sure Rabiot is going to play, but then it's obviously you can always root for Weston McKinney to to score. I mean, uh, but I I mean I, I wouldn't mind playing. Two of those guys and are the four thousands, right? Or no, they're they're below it. Yeah, Weston is three thousand. So Weston for three thousand. Yeah, he's thirty one hundred, and I think uh, Arthur is too if he starts. Uh, ben oh, yeah, Kerr, Arthur is true. Yeah, Ben Kerr is the most expensive at thirty nine hundred, and uh, he has the same goal odds as like Gio Reyna. He's right behind Di Maria. Um, yeah. he's ahead of Coutinho. Like that's. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we don't. I mean, it's something that makes sense. I mean, it's like, I mean, Juventus should get a lot of shots in yeah. this match, and, and you know, I mean, it's not a. If they play without Morata, let's say they they're not gonna play with a center forward like a reference. So, you know, it's gonna the opportunities are gonna be spread around. So it's gonna be rebounds here and there. Arthur just score. I mean, for three thousand, so you get a couple of those guys for for in the midfield if you want to. I mean, for especially for a GPP lineup, and and you can get the expensive defenders, right? Yep. Um, I'm not sure anyone else here. I like. Uh, I mean, Pjanic forty seven hundred. I think is not necessary. Um, again, Mata is fifty four hundred. I can play Mata at that price. I'd rather play Guerrero. Yeah, that's the way four I was verse, looking at it. Four verse. I thought Mata was actually an okay play if you didn't have Guerrero. Like, I think Guerrero is the better one in that group. But, like, the Leipzig guys are pretty are somewhat cheap. They feel like Danny Olmo at 5000 is cheaper than we usually see him. Yeah. Um, I don't think Daniel yeah. James plays for United, but, like, 4700 if he starts in the attack, like, that's not that bad given that they should crush. Yeah, I don't know. It's just It just feels that... <laughs> I mean, in this range, I mean, I feel after Guerrero, I mean, I like Danny Olmo, a guy that I always like, but I mean, my God, just rather go play the Juventus guys. Yeah. Or, I think that's what it all comes down to. You you can convince yourself as much as you want in this group, yeah. but the Juventus guys probably just make more sense yeah. from, from just, every standpoint. Yeah, exactly. For 3,000, I mean, maybe they might give you three points, but there's the opportunity of the shots and, um, you know, like a... I mean, if you need the salaries, I mean, there's yeah. not much to look in here. So, I mean, Marquinhos is 4,300. So, you see the algorithm and it doesn't like Juventus players. You're going to see center back to Juventus are minimum price. Yeah, they so. are. So, all right. Yeah, I, I think you're just going to say, play, let but... me see if I can get 85 passes from one of these guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which they could, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, you know, I don't know anyone else, any other midfielders. I didn't see anyone, and I checked the lineups. I mean, it's, uh, somebody cheap comes in. I mean, I, I missed it. I don't know. I didn't see anyone else playing that it was worth their consideration. You know? No, the only one I gave a brief thought to was Ricky Puig, and it was only because I just like him as a player, not as much yeah, as Yeah, he's a good player. This but there's no reason to play him over yeah. the Juventus guys. Like, that's what it everybody's going to be paying attention to the Juventus lineup, exactly. both for the attack and exactly. this midfield, because um, yep. they're just, they're too, as, as expensive as Ronaldo is, the midfielders are just really, really cheap. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
And then exactly. It, and then so. a defense. I think you play Quadrado regardless. Like I think. I think so. I think even if Dybala's awesome, in, so. if Dybala and Bernardeschi are in, I, I just think just at just that playing. price is really good. Yeah. And you can take the you can take the the gamble on sunset pieces. Uh, you know, he averaged over ten points. So and uh, also as I feel, you know, Dybala left footed, uh, Bernardeschi left footed. So he the other side seems to be his. Yeah. So he might get some shares of pieces. Um. So uh, yeah, the of the top four guys you know there's Angelino in there but I, I won't play Angelino in this matchup he might get an assist but you know it's again it's a difficult matchup yeah. so it's just not a not a good play to be so I like Teles obviously and I like Quadrado I mean Teles for my story that you know Manchester United is going to struggle to score in fact I'm going to be rooting for a Basak goal so you know, <laughs> so let's uh let's see if we can get some uh some uh, peripherals. Sure. So I like Quadrado and Telles. If in a cash lineup, makes sense to have both of them. Um, in a in a in a non-cash lineup, well, I think Quadrado still should make your lineup. Yeah. I feel like uh, at that price, he's a he's a no-brainer as a defender. You know, it starts with the with the clean sheet and everything. Um, so then it's like we have like always the old prices. Like Jordi Alba, six thousand. We don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> or Douglas Santos. Oh, yeah, he is. He he takes some corners sometimes, but you know, it's like it, it doesn't matter. I mean, this algorithm it's all it's all burst back. Matt Matt's a fall, man. He really makes the algorithm like bad to to soccer players. Yeah. If, if, casuals and, and sharks alike, because you know, like <laughs> I if, will say. Um... I don't think anybody was going to play him, even if he played out wide. But Danilo at fifty one hundred is likely playing as a center back, obviously, um, because yeah, because they have a bunch of injuries. So don't yeah. don't think you're getting any deal there if you're uh, yeah if you're there. But like Dest at forty eight hundred, I I have no interest in. Like I think uh, legitimately you can if you don't want to play Telus and or Quadrado, I think you can just go all the way down to um, Matias Delit. At twenty five hundred for Juventus yep. clean sheet and just yep. that's it. I don't think yep. there's any reason to go anywhere in between. Yeah, I don't think so either. I like, yeah, I, I think the leg is probably the best one. I mean, every um, I'm not sure is Bonucci's recover. I don't think he is. Or, I don't think so. So yeah, I think it's gonna be as you mentioned, Danilo and. Danilo is a left center back, which and Matias the light, the leak, or whatever you say it. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think everything else just makes no sense. Like, uh, you know, I, I mean, what else can you do? I mean, everything else is just a GPP play. Like, um, you know, like uh, Barcelona suffer a lot at home, so you say, well, Mikolenko is going to have another great match. I'm not sure. I mean, that's. Uh, um, then Florenzi have a knack for scoring, but you know, so does uh, the lie, right? So, so it just I don't know. It, I given yeah. the the upside that you're basically yeah. giving up by paying for a yeah. defender that's not Telus or Quadrado, yeah, is just you're better off spent in the yeah. other positions. And um, even if you're yeah, like. The- Going with a straight punt, you may as well take the twenty five hundred dollar punt instead of the three thousand midfield punt. Like exactly. I think people will play three defenders, but one of them is going to be a twenty five hundred dollar min price defender. Yeah, no, I agree. It's uh, just as you said, you know, you see the scoring odds. Obviously, you know, Juventus is a heavy favorite, but you know, Delay has a almost twenty percent scoring odds, <laughs> so which is uh, you know as high as Florenzi on. Um, Higher than Maguire and with those guys, so you know you see the the allure of Quadrado as well. Quadrado have a decent scoring odd, yeah, it's weird for um for what he does, right? So yeah, I would say, I mean, for me, that's the pool of defenders uh, uh, for cash. You play Teles, Quadrado, and you probably gonna have to make one of the center Juventus center back into your lineup as a lock. So and then the other ones, the other two, maybe one is in. In the utility, so yeah, it's pretty much you could play like four Juventus yeah. players, and it's really only so three of them are only so that you can play Ronaldo. Like, <laughs> it's not like yeah. you're playing, 
you're stacking them for like you're stacking great attacking players. You're actually yeah. taking a defensive midfielder and a center back so that you yeah. can play Ronaldo and one other guy maybe. Exactly. Yeah, and tell is expensive. I see your hesitation yeah. at sixty six hundred. So I mean that might be what you put Quadrado and um, the light in in the defense, and then in in the utility you see what is around that that you can afford. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I like Tellers because I feel that she, he should play full match instead of like, you know, drink out or anything like that. But, you know, Bernardeski might be a great play as well. Is he stars? Obviously, um, you know, all the different nuances we have. Uh, but um, but uh, that's it, man. That's all I have on defenders. And... Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Um, and goalkeeper, um, I think you play whatever. Can we get one without negative this time? Uh, no I think promises. we did it last time. We did it last time. It wasn't did we? that bad. Uh, who I did think we, have... we did. I don't even remember who we played last time. I Probably uh, Dubuj. And we played the, the Kiev. No, we didn't play the Kiev guy. We played other guy who wasn't as good. And we played the Ferran Paris guy. Yeah. He got us two points. He got us two points. Yeah. With Which is two more than Kiev zero. Was amazing. Yeah, it's, it's positive. Positive is a, it's a, it's an improvement. It's an infinite improvement, right? Well, it's undefined. <laughs> That's right. Undefined, um, but... Uh, I think the Kiev one, whoever it is, because they, they're still dealing with some COVID. But if it's uh, yeah. Bushan, I think he's going to be the most popular because, like, there's no Messi. It's a 4,000, right? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's still got a decent price. I mean, like, I, don't, I mean, those 300 might take you somewhere. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I, if you can afford, I will go with the, with the Dynamo Kiev guy. I mean, it seems that, you know... Barcelona is going to shoot a lot, no matter what. Uh, and uh, you know, um, now we said we said they're at home, and Barcelona has been really bad at defending, so it may, they might even get a result. Who knows, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, but you know, I I like the Gumak, like the the Istanbul guy. Uh, I just feel that you know Manchester United's problem is scoring, but they're going to shoot a lot. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm I'm taking that reference as West Brom, which is not a good reference, but you know. Was Brongoli half a six or eight points? Yeah. I had it, so I oh, remember that. So, but you know, it's like I, I, any of those cheap guys. I mean, I'm not even the Fern virus guy. Why not? You know, like I, I don't, I don't have a, a point against one of each other. So, of those three guys, I'd rather play Kiev if I had the money. If I don't, I, I will go with the Istanbul guy. So, yeah, I mean, it, it usually means that the other guy's gonna have the better days. <laughs> That's why people have to join the Discord so they can ask us who we have before lock and then get off of them. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's funny. Like it, in speaking about the Kiev situation, it's like it, nothing shows more than like how indifferent we are about goalkeeper. That we're just like whoever is the Kiev goalkeeper is who will play. Like it's not like we have an opinion on like if it's one guy or the other. Like if they rolled out a fourteen-year-old golden retriever, I'd probably just play him anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, go pick goalkeeper is unpredictable. Yeah, it's just unpredictable. You don't know who is going to be the best one, so um, it's just a matter of you know not get killed by it, right? So right, Pew and knows. using the salary yeah. for something else. So right, you yeah. just uh, at the beginning of the slate, you just go to Pew's lineup and then see who his goalkeeper is, and then you know who the most who the highest scoring one will be. Yep, exactly. He's got the crystal ball. That's um, the A. All right. Anybody has any follow-up, you can find Luis on Twitter at Patchigal. You can find me at Rotowire Andrew. Uh, as I just mentioned, you can find us in the Rotowire Discord, which is open for all subscribers. Just go to rotowire.com slash chat, C-H-A-T, to get in there. Uh, if you are a fan of this, uh, these videos on YouTube, if you're watching there, if you could just give it a like and uh, subscribe below. And if you are listening on the regular audio feed, if you could just rate and review it wherever you listen. So, Luis, thank you for that, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Good luck, man.